Ibonge chanini vijana wali hamia msituni Ibonge kibonge chanini vijana wali hamia msituni Walienda huko msituni kupiga ni ya demokrasi kibonge kibonge chanini vijana wali hamia msituni Walienda huko msituni kupiga ni ya wananchi Kibonge kibonge cha nini vijana wali hamia msituni walienda huko msituni kupigania amani yetu kibonge cha nini vijana wali hamia msituni very clear and you come along and you now have the living one talk of president m7 i have no doubt i have no question that he's our hero and he's my hero for having not only dedicated his whole life since his student days to date that up to now he's still willing to sacrifice uh, for his country and indeed we have seen the results and there are very many others in Africa and in Uganda uh, who have uh, played that role and whom we can remember. You see on uh, this question of what inspired us I can explain it in our song, in the bush. What made, what made young people go to the bush? In our song, Kibonge. Kibonge chanini, vijana wali hamia musituni. Kibonge, kibonge chanini, vijana wali hamia musituni. Wali enda uko musituni. Kupiga ni ya demokrasi kibonge kibonge cha nini vijana wali hamia msituni walienda huko msituni kupiga ni ya wananchi kibonge kibonge cha nini vijana wali hamia msituni walienda huko msituni kupiga ni ya amani yetu kibonge cha nini Vijana wali hamia msituni very clear the reasons were very clear and every person who went had to know why so the swahili many of you who don't know swahili it means that the young people went the, the song is why did the young people go to the bush they went there to fight for democracy they went there to fight for the one for the one inch to fight for the people of the people of Uganda they went there for our money yet, for our peace, which we are enjoying today. So that's what was inspiring us, is bringing about that situation, where there is a democracy, where there is peace, where there is freedom of the people. So that's what was inspiring us, the ultimate goal, the dream, the vision of transforming our society. Kibonge Chanini, Vijana Walienda Mustuni. And that song is a summary of the reasons why they went there. Uh, if I may share my own experience, me, what when I joined the Florosa forces, it was not merely to join the military, it was not going to join the army, but I was willing to give whatever help, whether to cook for them, whether to carry uh, luggages, whether, but let the regime of Amin be removed. And in the process, then more better awareness came of knowing what was the problem of Uganda, what was the history of Uganda. How can Uganda be liberated from this problem? And that led us to study, knowing how do other, did other countries liberate themselves? How did they do it? How did the liberation movements of Africa and other countries of the world, how did they do it? They had to organize, it needed organizing, it needed some people to lead, Tell some people to sacrifice, tell some people to be willing to offer themselves for the better of the future. And that hope, that goal, that expectation of seeing that it is possible, of knowing that it is possible you can change the situation in your country for the better, that made us inspired to share first, to understand, to be aware, and also to think of the approaches, what was the best strategy, what was the best 
way of doing it. And that's how we came up with a protract of the decision of which method do we use and came to the conclusion that the best way was using the protracted people's war, which would take time and the awareness there was the importance to make people aware. You know, people don't sacrifice without understanding. People do not do what they should, they do what they understand. Once you understand the need to sacrifice, then you sacrifice more willingly. You sacrifice more enthusiastically. You already have a, a, a vision for which you are willing to die so that you, a situation is transformed, the situation is changed to make our people better. So freedom does not come on a silver plate. Peace does not come easily without people who are willing to sacrifice for it. The peace we are enjoying today is a result of the sacrifice of yesterday or the years before. And it's not a small matter to just take life as take life for granted that things just that freedom, that peace, that uh, tranquility is just comes by itself. No. There must be those men and women who sacrifice beyond the call of duty. Because if you lock your own house, locking your door at night against thieves or say, putting a fence around your home is securing your place. But that's not really going beyond the call of duty. But somebody who offers his or her life and says, I am willing to pay the ultimate price if need be. Paying the ultimate price is, I am even willing to die for my country, for the good of my country, for the better future of my people, for the better life of the future. Me, even if I die, I have saved that situation. Who saves others? Who creates a new situation at a very high cost of his life or her life, at a high risk of his life or her life? Such a people are not very many. They are rare and they pay a price at a particular time, at a crucial moment, at an important aspect, at an important moment in the history of a country that changes the situation, that transforms the situation, that makes life better than it was before. And the history of heroism, or those who are called heroes, are only when there is a bad situation that needs to be changed, and those few people offer to change it, or to offer their lives to sacrifice for it. And therefore, celebrating a hero's day is mainly to do three main things. One is to remember those who sacrificed, those great men and women. Two is to encourage people to know that it is necessary to sacrifice for your country. Everybody should know that there is, where well, should there be need, if necessary, people should be encouraged to sacrifice for, the, for their country and for, the, for their society. Then the third reason is to tell people that let this sacrifice not be ignored, let it not be in vain. Let those who die, let those who shed their blood, let those who are injured, let those who suffer in one way or another for the sake of their country, not do, let them not be done in vain. Let the hopes, the aspirations, the aims and objectives of why they were willing to sacrifice be put into practice, be defended, be protected, and be remembered so that we don't go back to that situation. That's why, those are the reasons why it is important to celebrate. And as much as it comes every year, every year there are new challenges. Every year there are new situations in the country. Each time there are young people who are growing up. All the time even there are people who forget. <laughs> because people forget. People forget that 
as Ugandans have already forgotten, you know, Ugandans have already forgotten that there was a time when there was so much danger to life and property in the country, uh, especially the young ones who were born much later, that to see what is what, what the situation is now uh, should not be forgotten. And it is on these days that people talk of what was the situation. What was it that caused people to sacrifice? That people should die so that the situation changes. Because there are even people, if it's not only in regard to fighting, uh, in regard to, war, to guns, in regard to war. No. We have heroes of those like doctors whom we have remembered who during Ebola, during HIV, now during COVID, who are willing to, up to now. You see, this is the important part. We have people on the front line as we speak today. And we would like to, for them to know that they will be remembered, they will be recognized. And we appreciate their service, their sacrifice of willing to serve those who are sick, those who are like a, at a high risk to themselves. But to have that patriotic spirit, have that nationalistic spirit, have that spirit of willing to sacrifice so that people, other people are better off, so that other people are saved. That's why it is very, very important. And that's why we should talk about it. That's why we should explain it. That's the reason why everybody should be aware, reach a higher level of awareness of the importance of sacrifice for the better future. Actually, many times, heroes are inspired by the need for change, for changing the situation. There was a situation in Uganda for some time, as you may have read in the constitution, the preamble of the constitution of Uganda says that aware of the history of Uganda in the first 24 years, which was characterized by political instability and turmoil. That's how it opens. There was turmoil, there was instability in the country. There was a danger to life and to property. Now, that was an awakening call to say, what do we do? What can we do? And what inspired us was that there were people who were willing, who were already, who had committed themselves to changing the situation, especially to fighting the regime of Idi Amin, which was killing people and was causing that situation. There were people who were already outside Uganda organizing, and some who would even come at a high risk, like uh, our current president. People who were already determined and had the confidence and had the idea and had the awareness that this situation can change. You see, our thoughts, what we think, become reality. Once you have this thought and you have this dream and you have this idea that the situation can be better if I do the following. Even if I, like, if I sacrifice, that situation will be better. That thought, that dream, that commitment makes you determined, makes you inspired, makes you encouraged. And that's what inspired us. Uh, if I may share my own experience me, what when I joined the Florida forces, it was not merely to join the military, it was not going to join the army. But I was willing to give whatever help, whether to cook for them, whether to carry uh, luggages, whether, but let the regime of Amin be removed. And in the process, then more better awareness came of knowing what was the problem of Uganda, what was the history of Uganda. How can Uganda be liberated from this problem? And that led us to study, knowing how do other, did other countries liberate themselves? How did they do it? How did the liberation movements of Africa and other countries of the world, how did they do it? They had to organize, they needed organizing, they needed some people to lead, they needed some people to sacrifice, they needed some people to be willing to offer themselves for the better of the future. And that hope, that goal, that expectation of seeing that it is possible, of knowing that it is possible, you can change 
the situation in your country for the better that made us inspired to share first, to understand, to be aware, and also to think of the approaches, what was the best strategy, what was the best way of doing it. And that's how we came up with a protract of the decision of which method do we use and came to the conclusion that the best way was using the protracted people's war, which would take time and the awareness there was the importance to make people aware. You know, people don't sacrifice without understanding. People do not do what they should, they do what they understand. Once you understand the need to sacrifice, then you sacrifice more willingly, you sacrifice more enthusiastically, you already have a, a, a vision for which you are willing to die, so that you, a situation is transformed, the situation is changed to make our people better. What I would want Ugandans to know and to remember is while our sons and daughters of this country sacrifice let their sacrifice not be in vain. Let what they died for, let their aspirations, those points of ensuring that we have a better Uganda, that we have a better generation, like we have now. I must say, first of all, if I died today, I would die a happy person. Because the new generation that has been brought up under the NRM revolution, as a result of the sacrifice, of our, of our colleagues and ourselves have brought up a new generation which is happier, which is better off, healthier, which is in a much better freedom than it we had before in our time, which has been more, uh, which has been lucky to have more education, more health, and more opportunities and possibilities for their better future. And even our grandchildren who are now coming up, their children. So, really, the important part for this Heroes Day is let those reasons for which people sacrificed be maintained, be followed, be defended, be protected for the better, 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 better uh, future of our generations to come. And remember them and encourage those who, when there is, so that when there is a need, people are willing to sacrifice. And they know that when they sacrifice for a good cause, it will succeed. Thank you.